Thomas EXT versus Thomas EXY. <laughs> what? What is up, you guys? Realistic Gaming here. Today, we're in the Nat Geo channel, and we're going to be watching a Wild Thomas out of the nature versus Thomas EXT. So with that being said, make sure to smash the like button before Thomas gets it. Thomas sped down the tracks, his two passengers in tow both frighteningly looking over their shoulders as the blue steam engine raced toward the tunnel. They were so close. If they could just make it there in one piece, they'd not only be able to get away safely, but they had a good chance to stop the horrifying monster for good. Suddenly, it appeared, the terrifying sight of a creature that was the size of another train chasing after them. It looked worryingly oh, Thomas similar Hixie, to okay. Thomas, and that had been how the nightmarish engine had caused so much trouble. Although the resemblance was far less so now, save for the bright blue and red paint on the steam engine surface, the rest of the pursuer looked more like something straight out of a nightmare or an old <laughs> internet urban myth. Dude, he's As it shook. zoomed after them, both Audrey and Brett urged Thomas to go faster. They looked at the horrific thing coming after them, noticing the metalwork of the train itself was worn out, rusted and old as though it had been left out in a junkyard for some time. But Man. what petrified them far more was what looked to be a living being housed inside the train. The typical friendly Scary. rounded face of Thomas and his late friends was still present, but was protruding out of the front of the steam engine on a long neck. It looked like it had been sculpted from wet clay, pale and writhing around like a snake as the creature gave chase. Long Does spindly sound legs too protruded <laughs> out of the sides of the train car, scuttling along the ground. It allowed the monster to move fast as the real Thomas, but without the need for wheels or the tracks below. Ooh. Now that it had been discovered, it had no need to keep up its disguise, and Thomas.exe had morphed into this form to give itself every advantage in catching prey. The blue engine ahead barreled as fast as he could toward the tunnel, screeching across the metal train tracks as he shot into the opening. Oh, Sparks dynamite. had been trailing up a long fuse, snaking toward a large pile of TNT at the entrance to the tunnel. Brett and Audrey covered their ears as they rode into the dark tunnel, expecting to hear a loud boom. Instead, there was no explosion, just the sight of Thomas.exe hot on their tail. The wide, soulless eyes of the monster glowed red, one of the only sources not of light in up. the dimly lit tunnel. And they were locked right onto the pair of railway workers, filled <laughs> with a look of bloodthirsty hunger. Its mouth was open, bearing rows of uneven, razor-sharp teeth that were overlapping and protruding at various angles more like a pile of deadly jagged stones than the teeth of a living being. Red liquid was running down the monster's face, oh. flicked into the air with huge flecks of spittle as it gnashed and snarled like a feral animal. Brett and Audrey looked ahead, seeing the other side of the tunnel barreling toward them, but without the dynamite going off, their plan had already failed. How were they ever going to get away from Thomas.exe now? It all started earlier that day, on what had otherwise Sodor? been a what? totally ordinary affair on the island of Sodor. Okay, so it was Brett this, and Audrey's first canon. day on the island, sent there to keep an eye on the talkative trains and keep them out of trouble as best they could. Neither one of them could have expected the kind of trouble they'd have to contend with. Missing trains were hardly a diesel? new occurrence on Sodor, and was never usually a cause for concern. Wait, but it was certainly diesel? rare for those lost trains to turn up with their faces missing, thanks to a monster on That's the loose. Diesel. The strange occurrences all started after something dropped from the sky. It seemed like a comet, although it was hard to see clearly in the middle of the day. A few other smaller objects came falling from above seconds later, but most of them landed off the coast, dropping into the sea with a splash. Perhaps if the trains and workers on Sodor had gotten a better look at the debris, they would have been warned sooner that something was wrong. Unbeknownst to them, flying several thousand feet above them was a commercial airliner. Passing over the island, it was a fairly ordinary plane, with little of interest either on the outside or aboard inside the cabin. Except one of the passengers had unknowingly made a huge mistake. One that would spell doom for not only everyone on the plane, but the trains and people on the island directly below. They were just a kid playing on their tablet. Nothing strange about that, right? Well, before takeoff, this particular passenger's parents had been loading up Roblox games for their child to play during not a flight. Roblox, that come way, on. they could get some much needed sleep, and their kid would have a distraction for a few hours. However, without realizing, one of the games they Thomas had installed Dixie. offline was titled Thomas.exe. The friendly picture of a cartoon train had tricked them into thinking it was just a harmless game for children, but they were wrong. Over the course of the flight, their kid had played all the Roblox games their parents had loaded up for them. They were about to start getting bored and kicking up a fuss until they noticed one more that they hadn't played yet. Opening it up, their character was walking down a train track in an open, sunny field. The track kept going and going, seemingly endless, until a pop-up window appeared. A series of letters dripping red spelled out, 
Would you like to see the real game? <laughs> the kid had tapped one of the two buttons below, both of which were labeled yes, and Thomas.exe had been unleashed. Of course, the size of the scary steam engine Bro, had what? the cabin of the plane <laughs> the apart airplane? in seconds, sending everything aboard plummeting down to earth. That was when, down on the island of Sodor, Audrey spotted something tumbling out of the sky. It came down to land on the far side of the island, so she decided to go and investigate. She hopped aboard Thomas and told him where they were heading, the blue engine happily following the long, winding tracks that led in the right direction. The route brought them right past the crash site, and Audrey looked out at Thomas's cabin to assess the situation. There didn't seem to be anything amiss, save for a few scraps of metal that were dotted around in the sand. A big crater had formed as if a large heavy Damn. object had impacted the beach with quite some force, but the space in the center was empty. With no sign of anything out of the ordinary, she shrugged and hoped for the best, telling Thomas they should head back to work. Around the same time, Percy had been delivering Percy, mail, his favorite what? job. This green train was one of the junior engines on the island of Sodor, known for being a little cheeky but above all kind and well behaved. Although Percy had a little bit of a reputation for jumping into situations head first without thinking things oh, what through did you first. Do, Percy? Naive but friendly, he and Thomas had been best friends for a long time. So when he saw the blue engine up ahead coming down the tracks parallel to him, heading in the opposite direction, Percy slowed down to greet his friend. Or at it's least Thomas what he thought was his friend. It certainly looked like Thomas, even though it wasn't. Percy's brakes engaged, bringing his wheels to a halt as Thomas got closer. From a distance, he looked like he was alone, with no carriages behind him and nobody in his cabin. As the blue engine approached, he too slowed down, pulling up alongside Percy on the opposite tracks. Percy excitedly greeted his friend, regaling Thomas with the details of his work for the day, describing it as nothing more than another boring, ordinary day on the island. Percy then excitedly moved on to reminiscing about more exciting times, in particular the time he had slipped on some oily tracks and had been sent crashing through a nearby chocolate factory. When the poor green engine had emerged, he'd been covered in chocolate. Covered in poop. Much to Percy's concern, Thomas didn't seem to react. The other train was smiling, Sus. but it wasn't like he was patiently listening to his friend's tales. Instead, it was more of an empty, vacant smile. There was none of Thomas's usual happiness behind it. It was lifeless, like a copy. Percy tried asking if something was wrong, growing concerned, worried that something might be wrong with his fellow engine. He'd already heard that the new worker Audrey had taken Thomas over to the other side of the island to investigate something that had fallen from the sky. Had his friend seen something? Come to think of it, Percy realized that Thomas Get was out alone. Of the there was no sign of Audrey anywhere. Because this wasn't really Thomas. A long, slimy, gray creature oh. slithered out of the front of the blue engine while Percy screamed in terror. Its glassy eyes turned red as its jaws opened wide, showing off a mass of teeth. With a grating screech that sounded like creaky metal, the terrifying tank engine lunged forward at Percy. Its frightening face was Percy's dying sight. While all this no, had been happening, got Red was busy at work. James the Red Engine had been complaining well, all day after his beloved shiny red paint got dirt over it, so the task had fallen to Brett to give James a fresh coat of paint. All the while having to listen to the engine's overconfident boasting about how much better he thought he was than the other steam trains. It was only after a few hours he'd spent repainting James that Brett noticed the engines Jonas. were running behind schedule. Gordon hadn't arrived on time to pull goods engines on the Mina line, and now there were huge delays. To make matters worse, Diesel had just appeared and seemed to be up to his usual tricks. A large oil-colored engine powered by Diesel instead of steam, he was known for his bad behavior. Diesel was rough and tough, a malicious and devious trickster who viewed himself and other diesel engines as superior to the steam engines, and he used this excuse to bully them relentlessly. He'd single-handedly caused all the engines to distrust him, and that same distrust extended to Brett. But when he heard what Diesel was claiming, he couldn't help but be concerned. Percy had overturned, the boisterous troublemaker had claimed, and that was the source of all the holdups today. Then Diesel said that Percy's face was gone, missing as if it had been taken off by force. Brett scolded Diesel, said he shouldn't joke about things like that. Then, climbing aboard James, he set off to see what the source of all the commotion was. At the same time, Audrey Dude, had been coming Percy back toward the main line on Thomas, leading to the pair of them crossing paths with Brett and James. Meeting in the middle, they saw for themselves what the problem was, and they were shocked to find that Diesel hadn't been lying. Turned on his side, blocking the tracks was Percy. The green paint of the steam engine was the only indicator of who he was, because, just like Diesel had said, the poor train engine was missing his face. Thomas was distraught to see what had happened to his friend, oh, and both Brett and Audrey did their best to console the poor, mourning tank engine. 
Nearby, a group of spiteful, foolish freight cars jeered at Thomas. Audrey told them off for being so cruel, but was shocked to hear them claim poor Thomas Leave deserved Thomas it. Alone. The freight cars seemed to think what had happened to Percy was his fault. Her and Brett grilled the foolish freight cars about what they meant and why they were being so harsh. They said that they had seen the same thing happen to a number of other engines on the island of Sodor. Something had been picking them off one by one, slowly whittling down their numbers and leaving steam trains without their faces lying in the tracks to cause delays. Holding up more trains was making it easier for the one responsible to feed on more of them, and the freight cars claimed they'd witnessed the latest attack for themselves. They told the two railway workers that they'd been hauling coal when they passed <laughs> Gordon. He was known to be one of the fastest and strongest steam engines on the island, at times pompous and arrogant, but often good-hearted and willing Thomas? to use his strength to help others. But the freight cars had watched this proud and brave train speeding away from another engine, one that looked suspiciously like Thomas. It had been chasing Gordon with the speed of a train twice its size, while the bigger of the two struggled to stay away. The engine assumed to be Thomas by the foolish freight cars had raced after Gordon, gaining on him, getting closer and closer until oh, a gray spider-like limb had burst out of the train's metal hull, thrashing at Gordon trying to derail him. It swiped at his wheels, clipping one oh, with enough no. strength and force to bash it out from underneath the larger locomotive. Gordon skidded sideways, tumbling over himself Bro. before eventually coming to a halt, lying on one side, battered and stuck on the tracks. All the while, his pursuer slowed down Gordon. and slithered its elongated neck out of the steam engine. With a blood-curdling roar, Thomas.exe claimed yet another victim before crawling over what was left of Gordon, leaving him on the tracks. Audrey scolded the foolish freight cars for such a story, assuring Brett that she'd been with Thomas the whole time, since the two of them had gone to get a closer look at what had fallen from the sky over on the far side of the island. There was no way that the blue engine could have been responsible. It had to have been something else. There was clearly an imposter among them, one that on the outside looked like Thomas, but with a creature far more sinister Thomas than he. Instructing all the foolish freight cars and James to stay where they were, the two rail workers boarded the still distraught Thomas and went to investigate. Sure enough, within a few miles of the track they came across Gordon, left in much the same state as Percy had been, faceless and discarded, left in a wreck on the tracks. Despite their reputations for causing all sorts of mischief on the island, the foolish freight cars had been telling the truth on this occasion. The trains really were being picked off one at a time, and if something wasn't done soon, there'd be none left. And to make matters even worse than they already were, if this creature, whatever it was, got tired of trains, then it might just set its sights on humans to hunt them instead. So Brett and Audrey had to come up with a plan and fast before Thomas.exe struck again. Fortunately, Raising the alarm and urging the few other people left on the island of Sodor to leave for their own safety wasn't difficult. Thanks to all the delays, it was easy to convince people that things weren't going well and that vacating the island while Brett and Audrey sorted it out was in everyone's best interests. With all the others safely making their way to the mainland where they'd be out of harm's way, the pair could set about coming up with a plan to stop Thomas.exe once and for all. There was just one thing they had to be careful of now that everyone else was gone. They were the only two humans on the island, so if it got through many more trains, Thomas.exe would be coming for them next. They gathered the remaining trains, although there were still a number of them that were unaccounted for. Toby seemed to still be intact despite being an older, more hey, worn-out engine, and Diesel had also managed to avoid any encounters with Thomas.exe and survive. But aside from Thomas himself and a handful of foolish freight cars, I don't there like didn't those. seem to be anyone else left. The terrifying tank engine was picking up speed, devouring his way through the trains on the island. Desperate to stop all the chaos, Audrey explained the plan. There was an old tunnel on the south of the island that was in a state of disrepair. In fact, the trains usually avoided it for fear of caving in. But that was exactly what the Dude, two rail workers wanted safe. to use to their advantage. If they could lure Thomas.exe toward that tunnel and make it collapse with dynamite, then the monster would be trapped with no means of escape. They'd hoped that if they left it there long enough without any more trains to feed on, that Thomas.exe would gradually wither away. Unfortunately, thanks to the rumors being spread by the foolish freight cars and diesel, the other engines distrusted the real Thomas, believing him to That's be the monster. Up, bro. After all, this supposed creature did look exactly like him when disguised. So for all they knew, Thomas.exe was right there, biding its time, lulling everyone into a false sense of security. Left without any help from anyone else, Audrey and Brett hopped aboard Thomas and set off to gather up some TNT. They placed it at both entrances of the tunnel, then rode Thomas all over the island, sounding his whistle and making plenty of noise to get the monster's attention. It didn't take long for Thomas.exe to come scuttling after them. 
Hurtling through the dark tunnel, both Audrey and Brett were at a loss for what to do. The dynamite on the far side of the tunnel they'd entered through had failed to explode, and Thomas.exe was Noobs. right behind them. A frightened Thomas sped on through the tunnel. There was a loop in the tracks on the other side. If he could just get out ahead of the monstrous Thomas.exe, the blue engine could turn back toward the tunnel, and maybe Brett or Audrey could set off the second <laughs> load of dynamite, <laughs> but they'd have to move even faster than was physically possible, with how quickly the creature was gaining on them. Just as they passed through the tunnel's exit, they Bruh. spotted a dark shape barreling toward them on the adjacent tracks. It was Diesel. He sped in front of the tunnel's opening just as Thomas.exe came bursting doing? through. The snarling steam train collided with Diesel with the loud noise of metal scraping against metal. Thomas.exe scratched at Diesel with its spidery oh, legs, gnashing its sharp teeth, while the once scheming and devious Diesel kept his brakes on tight, blocking the creature's path, allowing the real Thomas to get far enough away. He came to a stop not far from the tunnel, where the switch to detonate the TNT was. Hopping out, Audrey and Brett reached for the plunger, pulling it up and looking over to the tunnel. Thomas.exe was pulling Diesel apart, its blood red eyes no, fixed on them they even and got their blue Diesel? engine friend in a way that told them they were next. Bracing themselves, the pair pushed down on the plunger and heard a mighty boom. The dynamite exploded with enough force boom. that it collapsed the tunnel opening, showering debris all over the place. There was an enraged screech from Thomas.exe as it was seemingly buried for good. It wasn't until long after the dust had settled and the authorities went to investigate that they noticed something strange. They had found what was left of Diesel and a hollowed out blue po -po. steam train, but there was no sign of the creature inside. What? All right, that was actually pretty cool. It was pretty good because it actually had a storyline. Like it actually stuck with the storyline and it made it to the end. And it was pretty awesome that we got to see other uh, trains on there like Diesel, Jan James, Gordon, because usually it's always about Thomas and or either Choo Choo charging it, but this is pretty dope. Well, shout out to the creators, Thomas the Tank Engine and Game Stories for their awesome videos. Uh, I'll leave the link to the videos in the description down below so you guys can check them out for yourselves. And yeah, thank y'all for watching. And remember, smash like. <laughs>